employees been mistreated by drivers? Yeah, so um, it's it. So along with traffic controllers, our road workers um, also um, do cop a bit of brunt of uh, frustration from motorists. So um, you know we've had instances of um, people being verbally abused. Um, uh, people driving past, uh, you know, sometimes we get flooded roads so we're trying to clear drains and all that type of thing and we'll get people in, you know, intentionally swerving into puddles and splashing our workers. Um, we've had objects thrown uh, at people uh, while they're working on the road as well and, um, you know, uh, drivers uh, hitting, you know, bollards and cones and signs and stuff which, you know, obviously can be shunted towards our workers. So. Um, you know, in addition to all that, we've had um, cars and drivers also breach through like lane closures. Um, you know, most of the time in pretty aggressive means because they, I don't know, they've obviously got to get somewhere very quickly for some reason. How many of your employees are mistreated by drivers each week? Well, we encourage our workers to report through um, instances of abuse or um, uh, lane closure or closure breaches. Um, so it typically impacts up to four people a week, but I dare say that's probably higher. So we're not, you know, that's the stuff that we know of. Um, when I've spoken to our um, ground crew, um, like our own employees and also our, our subcontractors, um, you know, a lot of them are traffic controllers. Um, you know, and just just on the ground discussions with some of these these people, um, they they constantly say, yeah, we've been, you know, we were abused here last week or this or even today. You know, we've had a few people shout out at the car and. Um, so yeah, it, it happens, I would say, a lot more frequently than that, yeah. Have your employers reported feeling fearful on a shift? Yeah, um, so I, I can recall, um, well, clearly two instances where people were actually assaulted. So uh, there was one instance we were uh, doing some roadworks and then someone had stopped their car, um, got out and actually uh, took a swing at someone. Um, just, I don't know what the problem was with that, but... Um, but in the end, um, it got, you know, de-escalated pretty quickly and they jumped in the car and went. So uh, there was another one where um, uh, I think they were a local uh, where we were doing some roadworks. Again, we, we do a lot of notifications, we do letter drops, we do, you know, message signs and all that to say works are coming up. So they, um, they ended up breaching the closure. Um, went into their, their home, came back out with a baseball bat. In the end, the police had to be called on that. Well, the police were called on both instances, but um, the, obviously we knew where that person lived. They walked into their house and the police were called and then the police actually arrested them. Yeah. If an employee has been mistreated by drivers at a work site, how do you deal with the situation? Um, so uh, what we do is we firstly make sure that they're, you know, physically okay and mentally okay is probably the other one that sometimes gets left out. You know, obviously um, getting abused or anything like that can really rattle people. So if we hear instances of that, we just make sure we talk to the person, we make sure that they're okay. Um, the you know, company does offer things like uh, employee assistance program or, or counselling. So if it's been a particularly nasty or, or personalised type of verbal attack, um, we can offer that to the employee. Um, and then the other part is that if we've heard that that, that has happened and, and it's happened in the middle of a shift or anything, we just make sure that that, um, that person's okay to keep working if they're okay, comfortable doing what they're doing, most of the time they are. Um, but if there has been, you know, like, like an assault or anything that's like been a breach, we usually do a little pause and go, right, everyone stop what you're doing. Let's have a discussion, a bit of a debrief, what happened, just so everyone has that chance to reset their mind and, and they, they then keep their focus back on the job because yeah, working in live traffic is you know, very high risk, it's, it's a dangerous job. So it's just very important people don't lose their concentration um, when, when they've been abused or anything like that, that um, they stay focused and stay safe. So, yeah. What's a message that you'd like to share? The, the, the balance that we're trying to do out on the road is really around um, keeping the road safe for people to use. But with that comes disruption. You know, we, we can't occupy the same space that someone wants to drive on the road and fix the road at the same time. So, um, you know, we, we do our best in terms of notification. So we put, you know, uh, for bigger works, we'll do like letter drops. We'll do, um, we'll put up um, variable message signs saying, hey, roadworks ahead for these dates. 
Um, but sometimes, you know, we can't always do that. The road deteriorates too quickly, so we've got to do something fairly quick. Um, so there's going to be disruptions. So I suppose, you know, um, for anyone driving on the road, just be mindful that, you know, we're there to, to try and fix the road to make the journey safer for you and, and um, you know, in the long run will hopefully be quicker and easier. Um, and, and also that there are humans working on these road sites, right? So they, they've got families they want to go home to, they want to get home in one piece. Um, so please, yeah, just, just to be patient out there and understand that we're, all we're trying to do is make the road safer for, for people to use. Thank you.